Hello everyone and welcome back to another anatomy tutorial. This is Dr. Ayan from the Veterinary Anatomy channel. In this video, we will talk about the muscles of the head of the equine. So let's go. Okay, so let's start with this photo here where we can see most of the muscles of the head especially the one which we can see in the lateral view of the head here of the horse and let's start with the muscles of the lips and cheek and the first one we would like to talk about is the, this muscle highlighted in green here is the orbicularis oris or in English we can name it as orbicular muscle of the mouth this muscle, look at this uh, uh, animation here, close circle around the mouth. And the main function of this muscle is to close the mouth opening. We have to mention here that this muscle has no attachment to any of the bones of the skull. So what is the name of this muscle? This is the orbicularis oris muscle. The next muscle we would like to talk about is this muscle here, highlighted in green, is the buccinator muscle. The buccinator muscle usually has two parts, the molar and buccal parts. This muscle originates from two areas, as you can see here. The first one here is the cranial surface of the coronoid process. Do you remember this part here? This is the coronoid process of the, of the mandible. The second origin is the upper jaw at this level here below the facial crest. This muscle inserts to the lower jaw at this uh, area here of the mandible. And the function of this muscle is to push the foot toward the oral cavity. So it helps moving the food inside the oral cavity and at the same time don't forget that this muscle forms the lateral wall of the oral cavity. The next muscle highlighted in green here is the zygomaticus muscle. The zygomaticus muscle originates from the facial crest. This is the facial crest here and inserts to the lateral angle of the mouth. Look at the muscle here, originate from the facial crest and inserts to the lateral angle of the mouth or to the orbicularis oris. The function of this muscle is to retract the lateral angle of the mouth and move it backward like this. The next muscle highlighted here in green is the caninus muscle. Caninus muscle originates from the facial crest, the cranial border of the or cranial part of the facial crest and inserts uh, two, two different areas. The first one is the lateral border of the nostril, as you can see in this picture here. And part of this muscle inserts to the upper lip so from the insertion we can understand the function of this muscle so the function is to elevate elevate the upper lip and widens the nostril opening this is the caninus muscle the next muscle which we can find here is the levator labii superiors muscle or in english the levator muscle of the upper lip. This muscle originates from the lacrimal bone. This is the lacrimal bone of the skull in the horse. So from this area of the lacrimal bone and inserts to the upper lip. If you follow the tendon of this muscle, uh, we will find that the tendon of this muscle from this side meet with that one of the other side and inserts finally to the upper lip. So the function of this muscle is to elevate the upper lip. Again, the function of the levator labi superiors is to elevate the upper lip. 
The next muscle is for the lower lip called the depressor labi inferioris muscle or the, inferior, the, the depressor muscle of the lower lip. This muscle originates from the cranial border of the mandibular ramus and inserts to the orbicularis oris. As you can see here, it inserts to the orbicularis oris muscle. The function of this muscle is to depress and retract the lower lip. So contraction of uh, this muscle, the bresolabi inferiors, depresses and retracts the lower lip. Now let's move to the other group of muscles, the muscles which are there to um, to act on the eyelids and the nose. And we will start with this circular muscle called the orbicularis oculi, or the orbicular muscle of the eye. This muscle surrounds and closed circle around palpebral fissure. And contraction of this muscle will close the palpebral fissure. Okay, I hope it's clear. So contraction of this muscle here will close the palpebral fissure. So this opening of the eye, of course, of the eyelids. The next muscle is a small muscle extends between the zygomatic process of the frontal bone which is the origin of this muscle and inserts to the medial end of the upper lid to the medial end of the upper lid called the levator anguli oculi medialis or the, me the medial levator muscle of the upper lid from the origin and insertion of this muscle we can understand the function of it which is elevate medial part of the upper lid so elevates the medial part of the upper lid so we are talking about the levator anguli oculi medialis now the next muscle called the levator nasolabialis or in english the nasolabial levator muscle this muscle originates from the frontal bone and from the beginning of the nasal bone so this is the frontal bone and this is the nasal bone. So from this area, this muscle originates and inserts into two areas. The first one is the orbicularis oris muscle, as you can see here. And the second one is the upper lid, lip. So, in general, if you look at this muscle, you will find that this muscle will be divided in this area here into two parts. The first part uh, inserts to the orbicularis oris. The second one inserts to the upper lip and so slightly to the lateral wall of the nose in this area here. And that's why the function of this muscle is to elevate the upper lip elevates the upper lip and enlarged the nostril opening here we can mention how the caninus muscle moves inside or between the two parts of the levator nasolabialis muscle the next muscle called the malaris muscle it's a small muscle extends between the facial crest or let's say the dorsal border of the facial crest and inserts to the lower lid. So from the origin and insertion again, we can understand that the function of this muscle to pull the lower lid ventrally, to pull the lower lid ventrally. What is the name of this muscle here? Malaris muscle. Now let's talk about uh, the other muscles which we can see in the lateral view here. We can see this very big muscle called the masseter muscle. 
Masseter muscle is one of the mastication muscles. It has normally in the horse two parts, the superficial and the deep part of the masseter muscle. This muscle originates from the zygomatic arch and from the facial crest. So from the zygomatic arch and from the facial crest. This is the zygomatic arch here. If you remember in another video, we talked about it and we say that it forms by two processes. The first process from the temporal bone called the, the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. And the second one is the temporal process of the zygomatic bone. Both of them meet together to form the zygomatic arch. So the masseter muscle originate from the zygomatic arch and from the facial crest here and inserts to a very big area here called masseteric fossa. Masseteric fossa is a depression on the lateral surface of the mandible. So from the origin again and insertion of this muscle, we can understand the function of it. The function of the masseter muscle is to elevate the mandible and presses it again against the maxilla. So contraction of this muscle will move the mandible toward the maxilla, toward the maxilla, and so it helps with mastications. The last muscle which we can see here is the mylohyoidus muscle. The mylohyoidus muscle originates from the mylohyoid line. It's a line on the medial surface of the mandible on each part of the mandible. So this muscle extends from the medial surface of this part of the mandible to the other surface. So it forms the ventral cover of the oral cavity somehow. This muscle inserts to the base hyoid and lingual process which is present in the horse. Base hyoid and lingual process. The function of this uh, muscle is to elevate floor of mouth and presses the tongue against the hard palate. This is the function of the mylohyoidus muscle. So we talked about most of the muscles which we can see in the lateral view of the head of the horse. Of course, there are some other muscles located more deeply, especially at the medial surface of the mandible, like for example, we talked about the masseter muscle as one of the mastication muscles, but we know that there are some other mastication muscles. Like for example, the temporal muscle, which is located or originate from the temporal fossa in this area and inserts to, to the coronoid process of the mandible and has the same function like the masseter muscle. So move the mandible toward the maxilla and it's one of the mastication muscles. There are some other mastication muscles located medial to the mandible, the pterioid, the lateral pterioid, and medial pterioid muscles, but we cannot see them in this view. So in another video, we will cut the mandible completely and talk about these muscles. So if you have any question, don't forget to write your question in the comments and share the information with your colleagues.